listening to Awake Radio. Straight talk for the awake and aware. Good evening. This is Chrissy McMahon, and you're listening to Alchemical Connections. Tonight on Alchemical Connections, brought to you by Wake Radio, US, and Shizzizradio.com, we will have a very special guest, Paul Wesley. Paul, also known as Prince Truth Chaser, will, is my special guest. He's a journalist, universalist, self-empowerment teacher, activist from Philadelphia who encourages the importance of love vibration and how we can create our realities through thoughts. So uh, without further ado, I just want to say hello, Paul, um, Prince Truth Chaser. Thank you so much for being on Alchemical Connections. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, it's great being here and being able to share my information with everyone that's going to listen. Awesome. So um, I guess we'll start with, um, that was a real short little bio, so maybe you want to talk about how you came into this information, like how you started out as Prince Truth Chaser, what got led you on this path, and, um, and what's transformed in your life that has led you to, to be the peaceful warrior. And, um, and there's a lot more questions I'm going to ask. So thank you, Paul. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me again. Um, it's it's pretty much one day you wake up and you look around you and you. I, I mean, a lot of people you hear, well, there's the Great Awakening and people just need to sa- snap out of what's going on and really wake up to reality of what we can do. And I think that's what happened with me. I just looked up in the sky one day. I seen chemtrails were being sprayed in the air and. I looked around and I said to myself, well, what is this? So I decided to do a little soul searching on the internet and then I ran into, you know, the term chemtrails and the term geoengineering and then from there the Illuminati and from there the New World Order and one thing led to another and I just, after researching, I just really asked the hard question to myself as well, okay, these things are happening but what can I do to actually make a difference in wake up people in the world. And as far as the name Prince True Chaser com- con- is concerned, when I was little, my mom used to call me a little prince. And the chaser, so that's where I got the prince from, but the chaser would be like, you're always chasing the truth. So Prince Truth Chaser. Because even when we think we have found the truth, we actually didn't. Because even when we find what we think is the truth, there's always something else out there that needs to be found. Absolutely. I agree. I totally agree. So, um, so you just like woke up and and just jumped right in and and you know took on <laughs> basically the new world order. It's like well, the powers that were. I like to call them, and I, I really appreciate the um the concept. Exactly, of and, terms. and 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 good. I just said I appreciate mm-hmm. the condescending terms. Exactly, good. and 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 it was one of those things. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and it was one of those things, too, I think, that I realized that no one else around me was really talking about chemtrails. You know, a lot I, there, there's other groups like, um, you know, that are activism groups in the Philadelphia area, but certain things like that I had hit, hit, hit home, home on, I just decided to get out there and, and to make it my mission to really wake up people. And I think I, I went from um, chemtrails and then took it to where I would like just film everything I've seen on um, different rallies, like um, you know, march against Monsanto. I just recently uh, marched against the mainstream media, and before march against the mainstream media even started, I decided to just go out in front of Fox News and call them out. You know, a uh, Fox News channel and CBS three. I just really have that one person can make a difference mentality. And I just think that it's vital to, to, to really empower ourselves and get in minds that we can really make a difference Absolutely. individual Absolutely. from there. Can you hear me? 
Hi, right, sounds good. Um, I have a, like a small. I'm a host of a small um radio show. It's called kind of like a YouTube radio show. It's called The Channel of Truth. Well, I just kind of do like you guys do, just interview people that are like-minded and people that really have a message that needs to get out and kind of try to reach as many people as I can so that way we can collectively like, get in on this whole, you know, waking up everybody type of thing. Um, and I, I got a website, uh, two YouTube channels, but mainly just, you know, universal stuff. I do a little bit of, like, UFO stuff, and I also do like a lot of, mostly activism too, so. But definitely just about getting the message out and letting people know it's time to make change. It's really time for us to get together and and kick in and be the change we want to see in the world. Absolutely. And, um, and you're also an author, so maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about your book. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called From the Couch to the Cosmos, and it's uh, basically a book about my life, the uh, life of someone who basically just, you know, didn't know what was going on and, and finally awoken to the fact that, hey, we live in a tyrannical society right now, the tyrannical government, who wants to take our rights away, wants to take our, our essence of, of human beings away, wants to depopulate 90% of the planet, and from there how, you know, I awoken and empowered myself to not only make change, but empower others. You know, and I think that, you know, it all starts with a vision, knowing that you can do it. Nothing, once we get it in our head that we can do it and, and nothing's going to stop us, that's what it's all about. So that's really, you know, my life is really what, what's going on in my life now really inspired me to, to write this book. That's amazing. It's, it's really, and how long ago did you write your book? It's not actually finished yet. It's in the end stages. So hopefully by, hopefully by August, this should be a finished product. So Perfect. I'm really excited. And I'm really excited. So, And this is just the beginning, you know, because I, I really do what I do to show others, like you guys do. We do what we do so we can show other people that despite what's going on in the world, we can actually, man, we can create our own reality through our thoughts to really turn around what looks like the impossible, <laughs> you know, and turn it and turn it on to something good. Absolutely. Because the, the, you know, Christy, because the the clock is ticking, and we're behind in the game. See, like when I go out and I interview people on the street, ninety percent of the people are clueless. They don't know. You know, you can you you ask them uh, about Barack Obama, and you say, "Well, is he Democrat or Republican?" They don't know. They don't know that. Then you try to explain, hey, look, well, we're poisoning our food, air, and water, and you know we're you know we're signing executive orders to take away our rights. They want to take away our guns. It, it, it's just wow. <laughs> so you know it's it's really it's really rough, but it, it's one of those things where I think on a collective level, on an individual level, that when we get out there and we do it, there is no fail. You understand what we're doing right now? There is no fail because. Even if globalists win, on an individual level, I believe that through our soul experience, and that gets into, like, universalism, when we talk about the actual soul and how we live our life with how we create a reality. So I don't think there is a lose on an individual level. Yeah, I think that's beautiful how you're, you're weaving this all together because I think that's the important aspect is what's your intention what are you really trying to create? Um, are you trying to right. make it a better place? Are you trying to make yourself a better person? And when when we do that, when we love ourselves and better ourselves, then we have a, we stand a better chance of being able to create something wonderful, and, you know, externally and share with other people. And I love the way you look at that. The individual has the power to do that, and I and I think it's so important that having a group of people is is awesome and I don't you know would never belittle that because I think it's just as important but I think as one person with it with an intention with an honest pure heart that they can create I mean look at Gandhi (laughs) look at Martin Luther King you know we can just go down the list yeah Mm -hmm. so and that's um, the thing I, I really promote groups I love I love seeing people get together and really shake the system and awaken minds. And I think that, you know, I love promoting groups 
and that's what I do. I get out there, and I, if you're if you're doing a rally about, you know, you want to end the federal government, you want to really tear down the, the corrupt system and build it up with love vibration, I'm going to be there with a camera and make sure thousands of people see it, or as many as I can. And I also believe that, you know, I, I want to get out there and, and really get into the meat and gravy of, of what's going on in people's minds and really promote groups because that's, that's what we need. We need people that are organizers and are good at it, and we need people that are good individually to get out there and really do the groundwork. Absolutely. I mean, we need all of us. We need everybody. Everybody's gifts, everybody's talents, and it and it all comes together. And it's, um, I, I uh, interviewed Freeman when I when I moved uh, to the back to the mountains this time, and uh, he he had gone through last summer the friendship agenda where they they got this idea they were going to leave their home and live in a bus and just travel around the United States. And and try to make friends because the media was telling everybody that you can't trust your neighbors. You know, everybody's a criminal or everybody's going to try to kill you or, you know, all this crazy nonsense. And I knew in my heart that wasn't that wasn't true. I knew like when I was at work, they'd be watching the news and um, and they'd be saying like all this awful stuff is, you know, just constantly bombard, bombarding you with all this horror and death and mayhem. And I was like, well, how do you know that's really happening? Is that happening on your block? Is that happening in your neighborhood? And they would say, shake their head and say no. I said, well, how do you, how do you know that's even happened? You know, how do you know that's even real <laughs> on television? I mean, they're making it up, or, you know, right. which they do. They really do do. And, um, and you know, people will kind of stop and look at me. And I said, your, your neighbors, you know your neighbors. You know the people in your neighborhood. You know, you can trust them, you know, they're loving. And, uh, you know, and there are neighborhoods where people are getting killed and all this other stuff. And I, you know, didn't want to belittle or or anything those realities because it's happening for some people. But I think, you know, you're into, it comes back to your intentions. You know, what kind of neighborhood do you want to live in? What kind of neighbors do you want? What do you, what do you want to be happening on your block? So, I and I think that's how you... You know, how can you live in Philadelphia, Paul, and um, have such a good, positive ab- attitude, you know, trying to promote a love vibration, and all these terrible things are happening in Philadelphia if you watch the news, you know. How do you, how do, you do that, Paul? Well, I mean, it's, it, it, I, I, I kind of get the whole how do you do that out of my mind, because once we, once we embrace that how do you do that mentality, then we limit ourselves to not, you know, not, how are we going to do it? We limit ourselves to when we can do it. And I think that with me, I, 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 I see universalism, a lot of universalism. There's only very few who actually mix that with activism. And that's what I want to do. I want to really, a lot of, a lot of activists that just go against the government, I want to let them know that this is a mind, mind game, that this is a, you see the elitist, that they understand how the mind works and they understand how you be universal works. And I think that a lot of activists don't understand that, that part right. of no. So what I so what I so what I right, so what I so what I kind of want to do is what I am going to do is I'm going to wake up people and say you know what we can fight them but like you said like you just said you said that you know all we see is negative negativity because what they want to do is they want to create that reality subconsciously in people's minds right so that that they create that reality because we're seeing that reality through that mind control box we call the TV. Right. And, you know, there are, absolutely, there are parts of Philadelphia that are negative, but it's my job, because I know what's going on, to actually go to them neighborhoods and say, look, what you're seeing on TV is only, it's only a fraction of what you need to be seeing. And, and that's when I, you know, I would go down to, like, say, 25th and Lehigh, where I'm the only, you know, Caucasian man that are there, and I'll be passing out hundreds and hundreds of flyers, because I want to awaken the minds of people who, who, you know, they, they have no idea I, at all. So I think that when I, at, an early, at an early stage in my act, activist career, if you want to call my, my journey, I really wanted to make sure that I reached out to people. And there is no, there is no fail in my mind, you see. There is no, you know, I can't, what I can't do. It's just I know it's going to happen. I, I won't allow it not to happen. And I think that we, if we all get that in our minds, that we can create 
our own realities in a positive love vibrational way because love vibration is the highest vibration in the universe. At least that's what I believe. Right. I, and I agree with you 100%. Um, I really do believe, and I said it to Freeman, but I, yeah, I didn't really get too much confirmation. But they give us the story, and we make it real by the, the mm-hmm. emotional response that we give it. I mm-hmm. really I believe that in my heart. And, um, and as much as I know it's important for us to report these things, you know, Agenda 21, uh, chemtrails, you know, the... Those uh, guide stones um, in Virginia, you know, all this crazy, crazy stuff that's going on. Excuse me. I really think they give us the picture. They put the thought in our head, and we grow it. We germinate it. We, we create it. Yes, I really do. I, I really think we're creating it. We're doing all the work. You know, they talk about we're <laughs> slaves. I Honestly, that's the way I think. And, and people might think I'm crazy, but I don't care. But I, I've been, it's like, it's almost 10 years now, 2003, when we went to war. I mean, I sat there. I was working for Lowe's, and I was sitting in the lunchroom. Everybody, you know, stops for lunch at the same time, and we're, they have the TV on, and they're going to war, and... And there's people going, yeah, yeah, you know, and they're all excited. And I'm sitting there like, this is so wrong. This is this this isn't even real. Like like I had tears in my eyes. I was like so upset. And I and, and that was the beginning of my realization. Like I knew there was something wrong with 9/11. I really couldn't put my finger on it. But when we went to war, it just totally just um, I knew I knew at that point that this was the wrong way to handle the situation and just people's attitude, the the revenge aspect and all that, I just knew that that was wrong. And, uh, and it's been a journey and it's been a you know long process, but I've come to the conclusion and, you know, I'm still open to suggestion and open to, to, to looking at things, but I really believe we're doing all the work. We and and it's a lot of the truthers, the the people you and I, you know, even look up to, or you know, people that we listen to, or people that we think have an important message to share. They get so caught up emotionally and attached to whatever they're promoting that that's that it's that energy, that energy that feeds it. That's 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 just the way I think. But you know. I'm open to suggestion. <laughs> I'm, I'm easily, I'm easily distracted too because there's so many things going on, so many right. things to learn. So, um, you know, I, 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 I guess in a sense I don't stay too focused, which is not so good for me personally. Um, my life has been very meandering, but I've also had an, a, a, a wealth of amazing experiences. So, you know, there's. There's a there's a balance there, but I'm not sure that I that I even understand it. But uh, now I'm trying to work more just on an intuition and just go with the flow, go with the synchronicities, and just you know put the one foot in front of the other, and and things will fall into place the way they're supposed to. So, um, you know, just and and that's why I like about what you're trying to do and what you've accomplished, kind of goes on the same. Uh, say wavelength and um and I think it's amazing how really the last three months um I've been attracted to drawn to connected with just some really amazing people who kind of think like I do or or kind of are on the same wavelength and just uh just just had some really synchronistic wonderful adventures in the last three months it's just really been Mind blowing. <laughs> it's just really, and I know it's just going to get better. I just, I really feel that. I don't, I don't have that dread. I don't have that fear. And maybe we could talk a little bit about Fukushima because I think it's real important what's going on. And it's been two years. It's been over two years. Um, March was two years, uh, 2011. And, um, uh, people are very concerned. Uh, people are starting to wake up to the fact that, you know, it's a lot more dangerous the things that are are happening in our world and and should we be hiding should we be running scared should we is there any place we can even go to 
So maybe you have some opinion on that, Paul. Maybe you could give us some some good vibrations on, you know, what what's the story? Yeah, and and I think you're, you're, the way the way you're going about it is 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 the right way, and. I think that there's something that, like Fukushima, for example, or or GMOs, which is real. But I think that what we have to do is, is it's great to bring the truth. It's, it's it's amazing to be a truther, but I, I think it's just as important to say, okay, this A, B, and C is lined up. That's what's happening. But I'm offering you, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and G. I'm offering you love, love as a way to get out of this mess. And I think that that's the problem with a lot of messages that are that are going out. And that's why a lot of people, you know, they're like, well, I just want to go back to the trails, and I have to end the government, I have to end the tyranny, and I just want to focus on that. See, that's what they want. They want you to focus on that. Because these people, I don't even want to call them people, these things understand how the conscious works, and they understand how, how the mind works. And they want us to focus on that. And that's why if you watch any of my work, I think I have about like 95 videos, but if you watch even years ago, I always say love vibration because it has to be, it has to be included with any message. Okay? It's kind of like, okay, someone is poisoning your water, but handle this in a peaceful, non-compliant way because it's, they're, they're, they're trying to get a reaction out of us. And with that, if you ever, if you ever, if you ever watch that movie, I think it's called, um, what is it? John Carter, I think it's called, the one on Mars. I'm not sure. And they, yeah, I, I think it's called John Carter. But anyway, so if the, the, the beings that have control of our planet, they want to suck every ounce of energy, not only out of the planet, but out of and every single individual. And how you do that, if you're, if, you're, if you're an entity that feeds off negative energy and negative vibration and lower vibration, you create chaos. Because through creating chaos, you get what? You get panic. You get anger. You get fear. And I think that, that, that I, 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 that's why I want to pump out low vibration people. I want to say, you know, it's good to be, it's good to be informed, but it's even greater when you can empower yourself through love awareness. And people ask me, they say, well, how did I get all this information? I didn't find, you know, the way I think off the Internet or YouTube. Just through everyday experience. I mean, just through... You know, when I first started doing this, Christy, I was very angry. I was Mm -hmm. really angry. I was really hateful because when I really realized just how deep the chasm is, just how deep the agenda of these few people or whatever you want to call them that run the show, you get angry. And and people have a right to. But after after the anger, you know, I, I was like, well, I want to understand the enemy. I want to understand, I, I, you know, and I, I did an interview with Curtis Davis, and, you know, he's in, in a cult. And even he said, he said, you have to understand your shadow side. You can't, like, you see how these new ages, like, oh, love well, vibration. No, you have to understand both sides, because you cannot, you can't, you can't change anything, especially with uh, um, an uh, opponent who's, who's, who's focusing off low vibration, unless you understand how low vibration, vibration operates. And I, and I dug as deep into... Not only the occult that I could, but to different dimensional beings. I studied that, and 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 when you think about it, it's scary stuff. But when you get through that and you understand how vibration and energy work, it's a no-brainer. Well, plain and simple. Absolutely. You can kill me. You can break. Listen, they can kill us. They can lock us up. They can break our bones. They can take our families. But guess what? They'll never take our obedience. Do you get what I'm saying? They'll never yeah. take that. Yeah. And and listen, listen. This this like you said, you said it yourself. It's fake. This is an illusion we live in. I believe. Okay? This isn't real. This isn't really <laughs> exactly. This is not this reality. Is not real. Ha- like if you have a dream, if any of your viewers have dreams, and it, you you know you you feel fear, you feel love, you feel pleasure, you feel passion, and 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 you feel all of that, and you wake up in this reality. So there's if there's I believe there's no death, and if there's no death. Once you take the fact that there's no death and that when you so-called die, you just reawaken into another reality, depending on how you live this life. So if you live this life, life like, like a jerk, you're going to wake up to another reality as a jerk. If you live this life with love vibration, then when you die, you, you awaken in another reality on a higher vibration. 
This is why they want mass chaos. Because when, when the hammer comes down, so to speak, all that chaos, all that anger, all that hate wrapped up in one, when them souls die, well, when, them, when we leave our bodies, we're stuck in that muck. We're stuck in that low vibrational frequency. That's what they want. How did I figure this out? Honestly, I, I don't know. <laughs> just by, just by, I mean, I, other than the fact that it's just by learning frequencies and energies, and that's the only answer I can have. That's the only answer I can give. Like, you know, I, I, I watch, and I, you know, other people that, that talk about different things, but I really, I really believe that we have to collectively just go what resonates within us. You know, don't believe anything I say. Don't believe anything you say. Take it with a grain of salt. Go out and do your own homework, guys. And really, you know, what what's best for, for you? It would be my message, but they definitely want this chaos. And it's a, it's, it's a sick reality. Right, and I, and I totally agree. I think you're spot on with everything you're saying. Some of the people that I listen to were, were Michael Tessarian, Jordan Maxwell. I listen to David Icke. You know, I even listen to Alex Jones. Um, um, some of the more loving uh, people, Deepak Chopra, Greg Braden, mm-hmm. you know, uh, people who are... Uh, uh, just trying to um, be more positive, you know, to to give you a more balanced message, and 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 the dark side, how important it is to understand your own dark side. If you don't understand mm-hmm. your own dark side, you'll never understand what you're trying to to research or what your you know the powers that were or the banksters or, you know, the big corporations, the GMO, Monsanto, you won't understand any of that. It won't make any sense to you. Um, Another thing is forgiveness. You know, we talk about the love vibration. I really think forgiveness is just as important as the love, and I think they go hand in hand, and I, you know, you probably have, you know, a similar perspective on forgiveness, I'm, I'm sure. Absolutely, and I think that how many people, you know, are willing to forgive, <laughs> you know, how many people are really willing to forgive, say, uh, Rockefeller or Dick Cheney or, or or any of the people we call evil villains, right. you know, what, if, they, if they came out right now and, and, and they said, look, we're sorry, not a lot of people are willing to forgive, and I think you, you really, you really touch base on a, on a really true thing and that's forgiveness mm-hmm. because forgiveness is key it, it goes hand in hand with love and I think that it was a real blessing for me to really get to not only interview but talk to people that were really you understood how the mind works and understood how you know people that are in the Illuminati work if you want to call them the Illuminated ones see these, these beings these people that operate and control us understand that we're all God. Like, you're a goddess, I'm a god, same thing, you know, we are all collectively, we are unstoppable, lovable beings, mm-hmm. and I think that, that, that we have been hypnotized, if you want to call it, we've been really hypnotized and put in a state of control because now, see, they understand and they have the power, but we don't, and that's why they use TV and video games and and Miley Cyrus and iPods, and, you know, they they use all that to really keep us keep us um, from reaching our true potential mentally. And I think, like, if you, if if you really look at it, if, if the power grid goes down, there's problem, reaction, solution. They create problems, get a reaction, offer the solution. So we really we're constantly looking for them to save us, and we're not really looking for our, ourselves to save ourselves. And, it's it's a uh, it's really it's a game. I think that this life we live, even as bad as it may seem, I think it's just a universal game, and they know it. Right, and uh, you're touching on so many important things. Absolutely, we have to though. You see, because there's so many out there who don't know it, and you know, if you if you try to bring this. Even, 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 you know, bring this to the table to people that are really anti-government and anti-Illuminati. First of all, how can you be anti-anything unless you understand what you're anti-against? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if you, yeah, how can you be anti someone who's a uh, Illuminati uh, worshiper or a uh, uh, Illuminati uh, dark being worshiper or whatever? You know, you can't be against anything in, unless you understand it. Mm-hmm. It's that simple, and this is it's a game because these people that you know the masses are against, well, the ones that are awake are against. You know, they they understand about different dimensions how different dimensions layer on top of each other. They understand about the dream state. They understand how reality works. And they sit back and they laugh at us. Like we're, like we're, what was I told we're called? Dead matter, I think they call us. The dead, the walking dead. Because if we're not Useless feeders, they have all kinds of names, yeah. <laughs> sheep and all that stuff, right. So, you know, but People say to me all the time, aren't you afraid? You know all these things. And I said, not at all. I, I think that they look up to people. They really respect what we're doing in a weird sense, in a weird way, because we're awake, just like they are. Right. We may not be in physics as the power as they are, but they're not going to do anything to us because in their little circle, they're like, wow, look at, you know, you have this big herd of sheep and you have me and you, and we're like, oh, the hell with this. We're going to walk the other way. We're not going to follow that herd. We're not, we're not zombies. We're going, to, we're going to try to grab as many as we can and do our thing. And I think that if we were the so-called ones in control, let's just say, okay, and we had, and we had individuals that actually thought outside of the, what's supposedly normal, and we would sit back, watch them, and I would, I would, I'd be like, wow, this is this is pretty exciting here. We actually actually have someone who's not dead matter, someone who's not dead in the in the brain who really wants to make a difference, and I would let them go because I don't think I don't think I don't think that they're all. I, I, I just it's it's so there's so many topics, <laughs> there's so many, you know, like you said, we're, we're really hitting on everything, and I think that tonight we really should, and I hope this really opens up a lot of minds, not only minds, but hearts of the viewers to hear this. Right. And and it is it is scary and I'm glad that you, you were able to say when, when we first hear this information, we're angry. You know, we wanna do something. We wanna go out and you know, I remember standing on the steps uh a protest in the million worker march. There was only about ten thousand of us and um and standing there at the uh Lincoln Memorial and saying, well, we're so close to the White House and there's all these people. Why can't we just go storm the White House? <laughs> you know, and they're all looking at me like, she's really serious. <laughs> and I really thought it was like a practical thing to do. I mean, that's how angry I was. And that's how, you know, I, I really wanted to uh, do something. I didn't want to just stand there with a placard. I, di- I didn't want to just yell, you know, our streets or some crap. I, I wanted to take action and um and it t- it took me all this time to you know to really come to the conclusion that that's not that's not why I have this information that's not you know for some reason we're the fortunate ones because we've gone through the full spectrum we've gone from the anger to the to the love end and still you know still struggling with uh yeah. the frustrations of daily life and you know, each time something new comes our way, we're not always as loving <laughs> and forgiving as we like to think we are, you know, when we deal with situations. But um, but each day, you know, we get that opportunity to practice um, changing the vibration, changing the way we feel inside and being aware of the way we feel inside. How, how many people don't even know they're walking around angry and don't even know it? They have no clue. Exactly. So, yeah, we're all fortunate. So we're, we're in a sense, we're blessed, but we're we're not better than anybody. We're not above anybody. We're all connected. We're all in this together, you know. And um, and the more, and I believe the hundredth monkey effect, the more uh, that we can share this information and just get people to kind of listen. They don't have to take a position one way or the other, but to just you know, hear it, just to be able to hear it without judgment or whatever, that we can push that threshold. We can we can get this information out to even more people because of the open minds of the people who are listening. So it's just, uh, it's just amazing. And like you said, it's a win-win. It's not a, a win-lose. It's a win-win. 
because whether it's on a grand scale, like if, if it's a uh, global or if it's on the individual, like what we've done with our own lives, how we've transformed in our own lives, we've made that difference, however great or small it is, we've affected the vibration of the whole system. Mm-hmm. So, and like the show right now, you, you, you could quit your show right now and just walk away and say, you know what, I want to live a life and I'm going to do my own thing and I'm done with the whole truth movement, but your seed is still planted. So... You know, you've already done your part. Not saying that you will, but if, if God forbid it happens, you know, you've, you've planted that seed. So what, what's your message to a lot of, like, because I'm kind of curious, like, what would your message be to, like, activists who are, like, you know, if you even bring up different vibrations or different energies, they're like, I don't want to hear that. I just want to end the government. I mean, yeah. full of anger, full of rage. They don't want to hear any of this. They don't even want to hear how the conscious works. Well, so believe what would it or not, that yeah, believe it or not, we actually do have hosts, and they're on everybody's mm-hmm. station, who, um, who, who, ha- like us in the beginning, uh, become mm-hmm. aware of this information, um, are incensed, they're so angry, and and they're they're so angry and so frustrated that they transfer that anger and frustration onto other people who don't have the same knowledge that they do and they get angry with other people because they don't know it and one of the things that we do is we really turn people off by the way we present information so if some if somebody's screaming at me and telling me that I'm I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing this or I don't know that and I better get the information, you know, I just just as soon turn it off. <laughs> I don't want to listen to it. In fact, I've come to the realization that I don't even have to deal with people who talk like that. I don't have to deal with people who have that energy around them. I can get as far away as night and day from from that kind of situation, and I've been really blessed in the last three months to, to really not have to be dealing with any of that so first of all you know try to understand that we're if we want to win souls <laughs> you know it's even like right, an evangelist right. if we want to win souls we're not going to you know go out there and say well you're a sinner and you're going to go to hell you're lost you know if i want somebody to believe in what i have to say i'm probably going to say you know jesus christ was love and and um he wants you to know that he loves you and no matter what you've done um, there's nothing so terrible that that you can't, you know, you can't be lifted up to the to the position of a child of God that you really are. You know, you're the creation of the Creator, and you're, you know, this wonderful whole being. You're not a part, or or you know, just want. You're not a sinner. <laughs> we get this crazy craziness, you know, that I believed for so long. I, I'm not a sinner. I'm, I'm a, I'm a wonderfully created being of a wonderful, amazing creator, who has given me an opportunity to exist in this 3D reality, 4D reality, whatever you want to call it, and and I have the opportunity to have God through me experience a physical reality. That's what I wanted to say. We're so caught up in in our emotions, in our in our five sense reality, what we see, hear, taste, touch, smell, that um, some of us, we can even talk about like sex, because sex feels so good to most of us that you know it can consume people, just like cigarettes or alcohol or drugs or whatever, and they get so um, caught up in that pleasure seeking or whatever you want to call it and it becomes to a point where it's no longer pleasure it's you know habit and you, and you don't have a choice in it that like it's like my father when he died he didn't even know he was dying it's, he he was dying from gangrene i mean his body was like rotting and it was just awful it stunk and like he didn't even know about his own body he didn't even know what was happening so we can live in this existence and we can think that we're having a wonderful life and we can think that we're doing what we really want to do and we can have no awareness of even 
our reality in this reality or whatever you want to call it. Like we have no no true concept of what we're even doing. We're just like going through the motions. And then and then there's others of us who have awakened, you know, for whatever reason. We're we're here for a purpose, I'm sure. We're here, you know, to um to make a a change if not in ourselves but in some small way or even a big way with the rest of, of the world and maybe the universe and beyond that have come to the realization of our of our own humanity, of our own physical being, of our relationship to each other and our relationship to the Creator, whatever you want to call that, whatever that is to you, whatever that means. And um and and each day, in each moment to live in this in this precious moment now uh to to try to understand like how can i make this better what do i need to do what am i sensing what am i feeling within myself what kind of vibrations are coming to me that are going to move me in one direction or another so e- even to have the realization and there's so many people walking around that don't even know they're alive they don't even understand the the amazingness of our bodies and what we can do and you know, and all these wonderful things, and and the stuff that we're still learning about consciousness and and the vibrational energy that we exist in, that we are, because we're everything's energy. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a construct. I believe in time travel. I I believe there's evidence you can prove to where they've mm-hmm. gone back and they manipulated things and you know Absolutely. kept us locked in. Uh, this uh, five sense reality, whatever you want to call it, kept us locked in, not understanding our own, our own essence. So it's it's just I don't even know if I'm answering your question, <laughs> but it's like oh, you're, you're, you're doing that. great. I, 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 you're doing great. Keep going. <laughs> I, I just wanted I wanted to say that because when you were talking earlier, I, it kind of slipped out of my mind, and then it just came back that it's we're trapped. We're when you talk about being a slave. We're trapped yeah. in our own physical uh, senses. That's what we're really trapped in. We're trapped in the physicality of our bodies, of the physical bodies, of the 3, 4D, whatever you want to call it, of this reality. And some of us never get out of that. And And those of us that do, I think, have a mandate, as you said, to try to awaken the others. To try to, you know, say that. And it's how that we do it. It's how, and and as you asked, it's how that we do it. We could do it so many ways, you know. We could could use all kinds of wile and guile and all, you know. We could be manipulative. uh, We could be loving. Or, you know, we could be generous or we could be selfish. We can can choose not to share this information because we could think like other beings do that well you're too stupid if you can't figure it out that's your problem and some people when they do when you first get this information i mean i grew up i i was coming from an abusive family my father was physically he he was a monster in a lot of respects because the way that he beat us but um you know and it took me so many years like i would say 20 years and um and i've had uh, addiction in my life and and i've been clean and sober for you know 22 years and coming through that coming through that penal mentality of wanting to punish back you know i still sense it in myself i still uh, notice like sometimes how i might treat certain men that i sense are angry you know, I'll, my guard will come up, and I'll and I and I won't realize it until <laughs> maybe a couple encounters, and I'll be like, "Yeah, why did I, why did I respond that way? Why, you know, why wasn't I more loving? Why wasn't I more um, sympathetic, or you know, something?" And I and I just won't be able to be there because I I still am stuck in some emotional baggage from my past, and um, you know, and if I realize it, I'm you know I'm blessed. And I can bless others because I'll, I'll give a better response and I'll show a better way. But if I'm not aware of it, I'll I'll give you know some negativity and I'll and and we'll feed off of that. We'll feed each other that we're not feeding each mm-hmm. other the positive, the love, the forgiveness, the generosity, you know, the kindness. We're we're 
we're feeding off something that's totally what we're supposed to be working against, <laughs> you know. And not that I'm all powerful that I could even do that, but I know that within myself that if I'm, if I'm aware of it, I have an opportunity to change that. And I love what you said too, that I create my reality. And if, and I don't even think that way. You said, I, I know that this is the way it's going to be. And I keep my focus on that. I don't waver. I don't doubt. You know, and in that respect, you're a lot stronger than I am because I still, maybe because I'm a woman, you know, maybe because of my own, uh, guilt and shame from my past, you know, from all the things that I've experienced, you know, haven't really worked through as well as I would like to have, you know, I get stuck, I do get stuck, but um, not anywhere near as bad as I was, but I know there's still a lot more, you know, to work through, and I, and I think when I realize that I am my brother's keeper, that's always been one thing since I was a child that stuck in my head from Bible study, you know, I went to all different churches and went to Catholic school and, you know, got away from that and was Protestant and all these other things and, you know, got involved in everything but Jehovah's Witnesses. I never <laughs> got involved with that or the Mormons, but, um, you know, all the other different uh, denominations of Christian. And, um, and what, you know, if I'm my brother's keeper, how can I, how can I help? you know, uh, and be of service. So when we remember that, you know, it isn't about getting what we think we deserve or getting what we want, realizing that we have within ourselves everything that we need to create the wonderful life that we want to have, really believe in that, and then being able to take that from within ourselves because we believe and love ourselves, then we can share and give that to other people. So, as you said, until we deal with that dark side, um, with our shadow, we can't, we can't get there. So, I feel like it's my interview. <laughs> you there, Paul? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing what you're saying. Uh, I'm just, I'm flowing with this with you. It's, 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 it's true. Yeah, I, I it's think great. that's what you're saying. Right here you. Same thing. It's really great hearing what you're saying, and I think that once we put it in our mind, you know, the universe, the universe, once we put a thought in our mind that we want to do something, the universe is really just going to get out of our way and let us do what we want. And, you know, and we can't look at life that, okay, I want to build this perfect wall. We can't do that, but what we can do is we can say, I'm going to place uh, a brick as perfect as I can, and then continue to put brick by brick by brick by brick by brick, one brick at a time, until I make the perfect wall. I think that that's the way we should go about, you know, not only getting rid of negative people in our lives or changing our lives, or just creating a, rea a reality in general. I think that we should look at it to where instead of we're going to have this perfect wall, that we're going to just step by step place a brick as perfect as we can until we get that wall. And I think that it's really, it's, it, we have to eliminate, we have to first eliminate the fact there is no, it, it can't happen. Because once we install that in our mind, then we've already, we've, we've already limited, our, limited ourselves and, and set ourselves up for failure. And I think accepting the fact that no matter how much we may think we know, we're still learning and, and that we're not perfect. I think that, you know, even myself, you know, I, I cry, I get upset, I have anger from time to time. I mean, that's just who we are. We, we, no one's perfect. So I think that when we get in a situation, <clears throat> excuse me, when we get in a situation to where we're confronted with a negative person or a negative situation, we have to really instinctively, through rep repetition of training our minds to be more positive, when we encounter a negative situation, we just say, you know what? It's a, you don't live here anymore. You're you're not a part of my reality. Get get out of my face, and and that's what you do. Plain and simple. This is our reality. We're in control. And once we once we install that in our minds, it may not work every time, but I guarantee that ninety percent of the negativity will just it won't happen. 
because we consciously rolled into existence the reality that we wanted to see. And by awakening other people to that, that thought process, you know, we're also making a ripple effect throughout, throughout the planet. And, you know, like you said about time travel, I mean, it's absolutely true. Try telling activists that, <laughs> they're going to laugh, they're going to call you crazy. Um, but that's what I think we should do. That's, that's our job. I think that we're, we're, we're love, love warriors in, in, a, in an aspect, you know, because we not only say, hey, look, you can, you can change the system, but you have a right to be angry, and you have a right to that anger, but there's a way to, to reverse it and turn that anger into, you know, positive vibration and thoughts to where you can take down the system with just a single thought. I mean, it's been proven that if you have everyone that, you know, think positive, that they can change. I mean, if you have 10,000 people that just decide to quit their jobs and say, I'm not going to take the system anymore, and they just decide to grow their own gardens and do this and do that, and, and we're just not going to rely on the system anymore, it'll, it'll change, because what are they going to do? They're going to call out the National Guard, or they're going to call martial law, and they're going to come, and these, these people that are ready for war, they're ready for resistance, they're ready for rebellion, they're going to need people that are peaceful. Like, what? we're not happy. We're done. What, what can they do? You know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna in turn change them because if if we're like some you know brainwashed militia that's ready to fight and bring martial law to the United States of America, and we encounter a non-compliant peaceful you know uprising of non-compliance, we're going to be like, wow, we weren't expecting this. <laughs> you know, we weren't expecting that. We were expecting aggressiveness. And I think that people and beings that operate on low vibrational energy, you know, they, they, they want to feed off of us. And by us, in turn, arguing back and forth, you know, it feels good to get your point out. It feels good to argue. But at the end of that argument, you feel drained. You're like, wow, this really, I just set all this negative energy and it didn't accomplish anything. Right. Did you ever hear the book, The Celestine Prophecy? No. Well, it, I don't have the link. I'll try to get it for you um, after mm -hmm. we're done talking. But it's it's like a story. It's not really like a, a nonfiction. It's more like a fiction. It's written as a story, and um, it's about these people's lives, and the, and they come in contact with this um, ancient um, prophecy, and um and they and they go through this journey and and they find these different insights and um I actually did a show with uh, one of the hosts of uh Shiz uh radio uh muddy muddy mudman and he he practices it he's been involved with it for a long time and um another one of the hosts uh cultist Negrand, he um he, I think he was the first one to introduce me to to it. But I had seen the movie. They actually made a movie about it. But it's a book, and I read the book. And um, and these insights actually are like a, a design for living. And even though it's written like a story, it's like a real practical way to help you to understand how to release that the the energies that block you from yourself and other people. And then to make you more effective in what you do, even to the point of not just knowing about these energies, but also to be able to read them and to, to, to see them. And maybe not with the physical eye, but, but to, to feel the energy and to, to just know and to be able to read it. Like, I think that's what you're doing. But it just gives you a, like a better, uh, a better understanding of what it is that you're trying to do and how you can do it more effectively. And um, and as I said, we got up to the six. I think there's like ten insights. And um, we're supposed to do another um, show to conclude the rest of the insights. And off the top of my head, I don't remember. But you can Google them. And I'm, I'm not on the Internet uh, on, on any web page because of the encoder was kind of acting up before. But I think 
I think it's something that maybe you'd want to investigate because it it might even help further your understanding of yourself and and the energies that you're talking about and it's and it's right in line with everything that you're saying so I don't think when you read it I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to uh, be put offing that you you know would reject because I think you would embrace it and I and I know that I have and I you know I don't live it on a daily basis but I think after reading the book and, and getting a better understanding you know it, it talks about those relationships and and how we can have those better relationships and how to to be more effective and and what we need to do within our own thought process in order to make that to, to make the reality of what we're trying to do more effective so um, I will definitely give you that link and um, and I think you'll you'll come to the same understanding and and I need to read it again too because um, it's just a it's just a wonderful a wonderful insight it's there's ten insights and they're just amazing how 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 they really work in your life and, and it's just uh, but I don't know where that where that's going um, um, I might somebody might have given me the uh, the link thank you Colty um, so I, I can give it to you right here in, in Skype so I don't have to mess with uh, the sweet web page but there's your link for the Celestine Prophecy so um, you can it's like 150 pages it's really a quick read it's it's a good story you could probably read it in one night it's very interesting and um, and I and I think it may I know it'll help me benefit me more and it's it's really been amazing since I had the opportunity to even share with uh, these other gentlemen about this um, process but I think I think you'll get the same benefits that that I have and other people have, and and it's uh, you know Freeman, he he recommends it too. So I don't <laughs> if I want to persuade you, <laughs> I can I can name some names and you know try to uh, get you. Um, thank you, Coltis. Thank you so much. Um, give him a a hug because he's awesome, and um, and. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know where we want to go from here because, <laughs> I, you know, it's just we're both on the same wavelength. We're just going to keep, you know, feeding off of each other because it's just, it's, 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 I think this is really what we're supposed to be doing. I really do. Yeah. And I, and I think if people understood this better, if people understood that the love vibration, as you said, is this positive energy. You know, is this allowed to manifest within yourself, within your life, that it just permeates everything. It's like um, it's like the sun; it glows in all different directions. It just you know, from top to bottom, left to right, up down, inside out. You know, it just it just blows. You know, glows from every angle. It's just um, it and um and you attract people that are on the same. You know, the absolute same wavelength have you noticed that with yourself have you noticed in maybe the last few years like where you were at mm -hmm. and and the people that are in your life today the the difference i've i've noticed i've oh my god i've, I've noticed the only, the only thing i can say is incredible change on a positive level it's just, to get, you know, I just want to say I'm, I'm really humble, and it's just a blessing to really be doing what I'm doing right now um, and have there's certain people in my life that are in my life right now because we all have to realize that life really isn't peaches and roses and that to really know what we know and have been able to go through what we've gone through not only through knowing what we know, but the individual experiences that we have to be where we're at right now on a positive level. It's, oof, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I mean, and, and I've, I've, wow, I've met so many people and I, I, I kind of feel like it's, they, they been put in place. I mean, like you said, when, when you operate on a higher, a higher vibration and a, and a higher vibrational thought process when, with, with positive thinking, I mean, it's just, you know, you meet people that are, really 
in, in, on the same level that you're at. And, and, and there's people that were in my life that really were negative, and when they seen the path I chose, which was the path of truth, and the path not only of truth, but, okay, here's the truth, but here's, here's the love. And I know that sounds so corny to people. You know, like, like you're just like sitting there meditating, like, oh, 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 oh. That's, it's not like that. No. You know, if you look at my, if you look at my interview, when I was, I, I was a guest on um, We Are Changed Fresno, I think it was. Amazing, amazing interview. I was really hyper. I'm like, you know, we need to do this. We need to do that. But it's all going to start. I was really hyped, really full of energy. And, um, you know, and, but I, I always spread, spread the love, love awareness because it's, it's, it's what it's all about. And, and, and people that, that, that seen my, my path, you know, I, I would have coffee thrown at me, giving out flyers. Ah, there's no such thing as Kim Trash, you're crazy. Boom, there's a coffee thrown from a car. Um, you know, people will, 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 will down. People, people have to understand that through, through our paths, and especially through mine, that you're going to be criticized, you're going to be down, you're going to lose friends, you're going to lose family. And, you know, you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to, a lot, because we have to, we have to break, once we break this fake illusion that we live in and this fake reality of thought that we, thought that we have, we, we, we change who we are. We, we, it's kind of like a cartoon, or what is it, a, before it's a butterfly, you know, it has to break out and become the butterfly. Yeah, metamorphosing. Right, so I think that's what we do, and I think that a lot of people that have known me, I mean, there's people in my life that I didn't even get along with that I'm speaking <laughs> to now because of what I'm doing. They're just like, wow, dude, do I, it's, it's, it's amazing what you're doing, and, you know, they look at what me and you do, and they'll say, well, well wow, what, what, what can I do to, to be enlightened like that? To, to be happy like that, to be determined like that. Because a lot of people say, you know, well, you're going to fail, he'll give up, he'll quit, or she'll, she's not going to make it, you know, she's no good. You know, and, and when they see you, when they see just how we're creating the reality that we want, we're taking limitations. There are, there, there are no limitations. We're taking it, we're throwing out the window, we're saying, this is what, this is what it's going to be, and this is how it's going to happen. It's that simple. If you're not on the same boat, then jump in the ocean. Okay? Yeah. That simple. I'll throw you a life raft. <laughs> you know, and I'll throw you a life raft. But if you don't grab onto it and jump on the boat, then that's, that's on you. And I think that, you know, that's what happened with me. It was just, I didn't care. You know, I, I've, have I had days where I sat and cried? Absolutely. Have I had days where I want to quit? And just say, hey, look, you know, Maybe, I, uh, you know, my life would be better if I didn't know what I know, and my life would be better if I had that big family with the, you know, nice swimming pool and, and the happy, you know, not, you know what I'm saying. Well, if I had a lot of money and, and, and had, like, this really great life. And, and, and I, there's times, I, I, I listen, there's times when I get depressed. Because you, when you know so much and you see what's going on, you, it, it bothers you. But then you snap out of it and you're like, this is what I'm here to do. This is who I am, you know, and, 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 and I'm, then it doesn't bother me anymore because I realize that I am so, like, humbled to be able to reach so many people and people like yourself and, and really, it, it makes, it makes, it's so great. It's just, I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, if you, if you, you know, if you look at the people that are asleep, it's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, because when, and, and that's the thing the viewers have to also realize is that the reason why a lot of people are so angry when they first wake up to what's going on is because you realize they're a slave. You've been a slave for a long time. And now it's, in, once you realize that you've been lied to and manipulated and brainwashed, that's when it becomes your individual job to change things. And I think that people get angry because it's, it's like, you know, you, you find out what reality really is set for you and you have to really get your bootstraps up and you get your big boy or big girl pants on and really create your own reality. You have to say, okay, well, shit, this is how things are, so now it's my personal responsibility to make my, to make my life happy and to change the world because that's the thing. See, once people like us, when we, when we realize what's going on, I don't think there is any going back. Because you'll always, you'll always know. Like, I, I, you can try to fake it and just put it all behind you, but you never, I don't think you can. No, you can never untake the red pill. 
<laughs> you can't, right. There's no, there's, no, there's just no going back. It's like, I've tried. I've tried like a week or two, just like, you know, I'm just going to hang out and do the whole guy thing and just, you know, which is fine. Like, listen, I can sit in the bar and watch sports and, and, and really, you know, just do, do my thing with people. I can. But I always have to have the other side, the truth chaser side, to where I want to support change. I want to support activists. I want to support positive change. And I want to, in, in, you know, promote law vibration. I, 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 I'm never going to stop. It's just yeah. who we who we are. We're warriors. We are we are white warriors, and we 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 we, we, we throw the truth at people, and sometimes the truth is raw. But hey, you know we'll hug you after. That's what it's about. Yeah. And it's amazing. It is, and and to think, you know, I I never knew. Like you know, I always thought I was born at the wrong time. I I always thought that like I missed the mark. When I was a little younger, but now that I've come, you know, full circle with this information and stuff, I was like, no, th- this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is really it. And and it sometimes it doesn't. Right. This isn't enough. Like I should. I like you said. You should have the house. You yeah. should have the husband. You should have the you know great kids. And, you know, <laughs> I do have great kids, but you know, you always think you want something better or different. And you never are satisfied with what you have, and that's like living in the now so important and and to realize that what an amazing time it is to be alive right now to to know what we know to be doing what we're doing, and all this there's there really isn't much greater that we can do i i just you know i i when you wrap your head around that when you understand the implications of what is happening. And where you're at on the spectrum, you know, if you draw a line, you make a a line and, you know, totally evil to, you know, totally good, whatever that means. And and put yourself on there, probably closer to the middle, and, and to be able to look in both directions and to be able to see. You know, you can't see all the way to the end because you don't, we never get the full picture. We probably never will until we're on the other side. But um, mm-hmm. to to realize what we're in the middle of, <laughs> it's like you know you can't make this up. <laughs> if you yeah, wrote a yeah. science fiction novel or a fantasy, could you make it as good as this? Could you write it as as great as this epic that we're living in? Could you could you do it? <laughs> it's just it's just mind boggling. It's it's unbelievable. It's it's beyond. Your wildest dreams, and uh, and I don't know what else to say. It's just we live in the most amazing times. We really do, and the possibilities are endless. And that's yeah. r- literally that. Even even with the darkest things that are happening that you can imagine, they're still the most amazing, beautiful things. You know, they oh, haven't destroyed everything. Mm-hmm. And and look at it this way: that as I said before, it's all game. I mean. Without the bad, without the evil, how can we grow as souls? How can we grow? I mean, that, that's the challenge, you see, because that's how, as individual beings, we grow, because without the, you have to have both. You have to have the light and the dark. If you want to grow, because... Absolutely. I, 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 was, I did an interview, and, and the one guy I had said to me, he said, well, these things that are happening are happening for a reason. Right. Like you talk about time travel, and all, time travel, and all, and how we individually ascend and get better and uh, understand our, our, ourselves better, and we can better our, you know, people around us and our children, my kids, your kids, alike, and you know, teach them what we know. And I think that's what it's all about. It's all about, you know, I don't, I, I see what's going on, and and I, I want to change, it. and and that's it's, it feels so great to be able to, like you said, be here in the now, just amazing, because. You know, when all is said and done, we're going to look back at, you know, I believe that we're all going to look back at this when we're on the other side, if you want to say, you know, and we're going to say, wow, like, that was one hell of a ride, like, you know. And I'm completely, I always say I am completely insane with what I do because I love it so much, but I want to come back again. If people say, oh, I can't wait to go home, I can't wait to go home. No, I don't want to go home, I'm going to come back. Because I didn't have a great upbringing, but I love the fact that I didn't because that made me who I am now. You see, 
Mm-hmm. I love the fact that I went through painful relationships because that made me learn things to better myself and empower others now. And, you know, I mean, that's, it's, it's just amazing to go through all that because without all that, we'd be zombies. We wouldn't have what we have now, you know? We would be, I don't know, I guess normal? Because I don't consider myself normal at all, but I guess we would just be normal. Would it be normal or we would just be out of touch? I think we just wouldn't be in touch with with the full spectrum of of life. We just, we, we really wouldn't be living in the sense that we actually are now. You know, and, right. and and in the beginning, it doesn't feel too much like living. <laughs> it feels more like right. torture and pain. <laughs> it's true, but, it's true. Yeah, but as you as you learn to embrace it and learn to understand that, and and it's and not even embracing. It's it's more or less a detachment. I think I think we get detached from the emotional wreckage or whatever you want to call it the emotional aspects of life and it's not that we don't care or you know we're incapable of feeling or anything like that it's just that is it we're numb i don't even think it's numb i think we've come to the realization that putting all that energy into the emotions on certain issues is so draining and and so life-taking that we've realized that that we don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to feed that, like you said. We, mm-hmm. That's not that's not my job. It's no longer my job to feed mm-hmm. this this emotional baggage or you know whatever it is or this uh, you know it's like watching the, the the little starving children on television and they're asking you for money. Well, they do that for a reason. <laughs> they they put these malnutrition children they they set up this million dollar production commercial infomercials and and they you know suck energy mm-hmm. and emotion out of you to get mm-hmm. you to to buy into paying them money that they're going to use to to get more wealthy not necessarily feed those children no, well, the children are probably going to become like slave labor or something like that. So they're not only sucking our energy, they're sucking their energy too. Right. So, And, and if you yeah. look at it in that respect, in all these different social structures, you know, the banks, the corporations, you know, agriculture, uh, oil industry, the military, you know, medical, science, education, you know, just go down the list social services whatever you know and you and you look at it in that construct of you know it's set up specifically not to not to help and uplift but mm-hmm. it's really there its main purpose is to drain energy and you know whether you want to call that energy money or whatever time emotions whatever it's it's just taking, and that's one of the Celestine prophecies that when you come a, a, around a person, one of the insights when you come around a person who has that negative energy, they they're, they're mm-hmm. stealing it from you. They're stealing your energy. So instead of letting them steal it, you give it to them. You give them their energy. So like with me, I'm still like running away from these negative people. But I guess you come to the point where you can stand there and you can just give them so much of yourself that it actually feeds you it actually feeds you that you're you're not drained like you you would have been when you weren't able to like understand even what was happening and why it's happening so that's one of the insights so you know just a little teaser there but it it teaches you like i think it's like the fifth insight or something like don't let them steal it give it away give the energy away so it's kind of on the same uh, uh, thought pattern that we're talking about love and forgiveness it's it's mm-hmm. taking it even to a higher level to where we have control over the energy that we have and we decide you know who's going to get it <laughs> because we're just getting yeah. it and and in that process we're feeding ourselves it's a it's mm-hmm. a it's an absolute win-win 
thing and i and i don't i don't even want to pretend that i understand the whole implication of it but that's kind of the gist of it so i you know that's a little teaser to kind of get you to you know get into this because i think you'll really i think you'll get it and i think you'll you'll really love it and i think it'll 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 help make some more changes and and empowering you you know and um and definitely i need to reread it because um you know it's it's not like riding a bike you do forget stuff <laughs> especially when you're like on this level and there's so many things to remember so yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's another thing like how do, how do we retain all this information <laughs> like you know how do we do that it's just like and it's not even like i don't i don't remember names and like i'll remember concepts and i'll remember connections like this thing is connected to this because you know you can see where there's there's parallels and stuff but i i, w- I wouldn't be able to sit here like some people and they'll give you names dates times you know and and they'll just give you the whole story and the whole rundown i i don't necessarily i'm not able to do that but um mm-hmm. but in a lot of respects like i can i can draw those connections and i can i can see how these things you know are really connected they're not separate they're not happening isolated they're not happening in a bubble it's it's a grand scheme it's not a you know it's not all these isolated incidents although they look that way they're all done you know for an effect and uh, you know and as you're talking about energy you know well, it's like if we walk into a party and, you know, we're surrounded by people we like, and then you have that one girl who lives in the party and no one likes her. As soon as she walks in that door, what happens? Yeah, everybody's She brings energy. everyone down. <laughs> she brings yeah. everybody down. And, 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 like, with relationships, um, you know, we want someone that's on the same wavelength and the same, like, energy level and the same, like, has the same mindset that we have. And I think that when when we meet someone, as soon as they start to bring us down, because see, they want to feed off of our pop, they want to bring us down to their level. So we're on a level of we get, you know, we're feeding each other with negativity. I think that what happens with 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 that is we have to say, okay, well, I'm going to try to steer you in the right direction. I care about you. I'm going to help you, but then I'm going to let you go because if I don't want you in my circle. Like, mm-hmm. And I think that. In order for people to change, like people say, well, how can I, how can I go ahead and think positive? How can I go ahead? Because I'll forget the next day. Like, how can I study this or, or really awaken my? Once I'm awakened, how can I stay and do this and do that? Well, a real good thing would be called the mirror effect. You, you, you or, or wait a note on a refrigerator that says, "I am infinite consciousness. I am unstoppable. I am all love." And you wake up every day, you'll see that on the refrigerator door, and boom, you know, it, 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 it's in your mind every day. Or you can just look in the mirror every day and say, I, I love you, you're amazing, you're an amazing individual, and you're going to really get out there and change, you know, the world. That's what I believe. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, and, and, I think and, we've and, read and, the and, same and, books and watched the same pods, absolutely. <laughs> I, I would, totally would agree. <laughs> You think we read the same book you had? Yeah, we read the same books, and I think we watched the same videos. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I honestly, I just get this. I, I get this. I honestly got this through this way through experience. And like, if I was to see like a show or or like, I don't read too much, but you know, I like to write. But I'm not like a big reader. Reader. I'm more of a. I'm more of like a. I don't know. More of a experiencer. And I think that I kind of see, I kind of feed off of my own experiences and the smiles of other people. I give people hugs. Well, if I go to a rally, everyone goes, oh, there he is, you know. And and, and they know that I'm all about positive positive vibration. And it it feels good. That's, that's, I love it. And I think that when when I watch a video, say, of, you know, whether it be David Ike or this person or that person, you know, a lot of what they say, I say, and I think that, you know, they, you, you, I think they got the information that they got just from waking up, because I think on a subconscious level, when we wake up, it just flows through us, mm-hmm. through our emotions, through our experiences, 
I mean, some people study, you know, the ways of, of the ancients, or some people study, like, you know, people from the past. I, I never really did that. I just went with how I felt. And there's been times that I've, I've maybe watched a video of this or a video of that, and I could really connect with what they were saying and learn a thing or two. But 90% uh, of what I, like, I talk to people, like, oh, my God, I heard that from this person, or I heard that from that person. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I just got, I just get it from going with the flow. I've had it where I would sit in a restaurant, and I would be talking to people. Like, I, I have a shirt, like a, you know, alien hybrid shirt. And they were like, oh, my God, have you ever heard of abductions or this or this or this? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I get into that with them when I start talking. They're like, are you sure you're not um, Hindu? You don't believe in, like, reincarnation? Like, uh, this person, that person? I said, no. And they're like, well, the way you're talking, like, you have that religious, you know, mindset. I'm like, I just, I have the religion of life. Like, some things <laughs> I agree with in the Bible. You know, I, exactly. Like, some things I have, you know, I take, I take what I can out of the Holy Bible. Things I resonate with, I keep. Especially the fact that, you know, that, you know, I take the law of vibration out of the Bible and I keep it close to me. Uh, there's some things I take out of Buddhism that I keep close to me. Something I take from everything. And it, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. It's, it's that simple. And my, all, all I want to do is make people, I want to make other, as many people that are around me happy. It's that simple. If you're, if you, you know, um, and I think that's why, you know, if I was to get in a relationship, it's like, I'm not going to do what you're negative. But plain and simple. You know, if, if I'm willing to go 50-50, but I, you know, I just refuse to let the BS in my circle. It's that simple. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, but no, it's. And I hope that I, I, I hope that my daughter, you know, she has learned from what I'm doing and empowers herself. Says, you know what, I'm going to take what I can from that that resonates with me, and I'll just throw the rest away. And I'm fine with that. She can even throw the important things away if she's bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's just, and it goes back, you know, it goes back to how amazing it is that we're able to do what we do. It's, just, it's crazy. We're going completely insane. <laughs> but in a good way. No, it's and it's and and that's another thing. And we and when we have little chats, sometimes uh, we'll just come together on the on the radio and um, we'll have little uh, little talks. And they're not broadcast. It's just uh, we do it in Skype, whatever. And we always go around, and it, and it's like cyclical, I guess. That you know, we want to present this information, but we also realize that. Not everybody can handle it, and some people exactly. are going to be frightened, and some people are going to be angry, and believe it or not, some people are going to go crazy, because it's mm -hmm. just going to be so absolutely overwhelming, they're not going to know what to do. I mean, to wake up, you know, suppose you're a military family, you know, you right. love your country, you love your president, you know, you you respect the government, you know, uh America is mighty and, you know, all-powerful and can do no wrong and we've done so so much good and, you know, and just have this mindset that, you know, life is a certain way and then have somebody like me <laughs> come in and rip your covers, not only rip your covers off, but take some of your skin, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and like, I'm just like bash it into your head and tell you you're stupid because you don't know this. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we do that or we should do it or it, it does happen. You know, well, they'll take it sure that way it. because they're not educated on what's going on, so they'll take it as an insult automatically. Yeah. They, they, get, they get into what's called fight mode in their mind because, right. you know, you're, you're basically taking everything that they live for and saying, hey, guess what? Your, president, your commander in chief doesn't care. Guess what? Guess what? You're, you're fighting. You're, you're, you're out there fighting for the rich. So they can get richer and control the masses. You tell them that, and they're going to they're going to get on they're going to get in what I call flight mode because you know it's like shock. You're shocking their mind, right? And when you shock them, when you shock their mind to what what really what's going on, real reality is they don't know how to. Yeah, you know, it's it's. I don't even I don't even I don't know. There's this. I, I've never really got into the whole. And there's just some people you just can't reach. 
Mm-hmm. It's that, it's that, it seems that way. Um, you know, but like, the one thing, like, I'll be on Facebook and I see people and, and, and they have these uh, control groups or these GMO groups or these anti-NSA groups and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, on your search engine on Facebook, just, just search, um, uh, uh, ESPN. Over 20 million people are on that, okay? What is and it? They I'm, I'm not sure I know what it is. Uh, ESPN Sports. Oh, ESPN uh, Sports. I right, got right. it. You get this, right. So you would do like the ESPN Sports, or if you would search like, uh, what's that, the, the wrestling or, or Fox. Hey, you, WWE, WWE, yeah. Right. No, 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 no. Like, go on Facebook. Just on Facebook. You now you search for people, like find friends, I think it is. Uh-huh. Right. Well, what you want to do, say you type in like the, the weather channel. And it'll, 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 it'll come up the weather channel, and it'll come up like 20 million likes, let's just say, right? Right. Or 20 million followers. But it gives you the chance, like you'll see on their wall, um, whatever they post, and you'll see how many people comment on that, like just the comment section. And what I've, what, I, what I've been doing is like, instead of posting like these individual circle, like anti-chemtrail group or anti this group, because what we're basically doing is we're swapping sticks. We're swapping all these ideas with each other and it's getting nowhere because we're just, it's like, we all know this already. When are we going to start sharing it elsewhere? So what I do is I'll go like, I'll go to like uh, Fox News where people don't know anything. And, and Fox will say, well, you know, the weather today was, you know, partly cloudy, blah, blah, blah. And you'll have, you'll have, I think, um, maybe say 3,000 comments and 5,000 likes on that particular post. And I'll just comment my website right on there. I'll put, you want to see what's really going on with the weather? www.frankfruitchaser.com. <laughs> you want to see what Fox News really isn't telling you? www.frankfruitchaser.com. And, and I do that. I do that with the, uh, 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 the football. Like you, wherever you're from, say you're from um, Toronto. Like I'll go to Toronto Blue Jays, okay? Mm-hmm. And you'll see it. You'll see They'll still post a picture of like a picture. And it'll get like 5,000 hits and 20,000 comments. And I'll continuously make comments on that. Because, you're, you're, you, listen, you could wake up hundreds of people doing that way. And you're not doing it in an individual group. You're actually waking up minds that don't know. I, I've got about 500 YouTube subscribers just by doing that. I did, I did that before, but not the way you did. I think I just mm-hmm. was posting the same message mm-hmm. and I got blocked on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> for doing that, yeah. I got you know they blocked me from posting. So yeah, mm-hmm. I've I've gone through all those different changes. But yeah, I think what you're saying is maybe a little bit more practical. You know, if you want to see something, why don't you check out my website? Right, like you have to realize, like you you were saying, how you and your in your group, you know, you really talk about how like if you have to be really gentle with awakening people that don't understand what's going on. So what you do is like if you have like you have to you have to understand that these beings that are holding down humanity and mind tricking everyone, or they understand how the mind works. So that brings me back to what I said earlier. When you understand how they work and they manipulate reality, then in order to reverse that and awaken reality to the reality that you know is real, you have to do the same thing. So if you go on Facebook and you put um, you know um, the food channel. You say, hey, do you want some really good, way to make some really good pies? www. Awake, you know, awake this, you know, and right. that's what you do. And, 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 and you're just commenting. So, like, if, if they have, say, let's just say they have five posts in, in five hours, you make one post in each of the five, just enough so where you don't get in. Right. And I think I've got, I think I've got, like, warnings where they're like, if you continue to do this, we're going to stop you from making comments. So I log out of that account, go to another account, and they continuously feed them truth. So right. it's, it's, this is why I say, see, people look, that are listening right now, if you can't get off your couch, if you can't protest, if you can't do lectures, if you can't, you know, do something constructive online, because there's ways around it. It's, it's amazing, you know. Because I think, I think that if we go ahead and we continuously post in the same groups, we're just sharing ideas with each other. I think that's, not, that's, not, that's a bad thing. It's amazing. But Yeah, but it's just kind of like keeping it in, you know, it's incestuous. Right. You're, not, you're, <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're not going right. out and, you know, 
share and spreading it. You're just keeping it right. locked up in the same. But you know, and it's funny. But believe it or not, I have a, a certain circle of friends. I don't know even say it. It's it fluctuates because there's different people, and I have like you. I have different Facebook pages. But mm-hmm. I notice that even the people that post are. They're all different. I mean, they're stuck in the anger. You know, they want to. They want to promote. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to get our guns and go. You know, take care of the government. <laughs> you know, it's like all, all this right. stuff, and it's like, well, no, we, that's not really what we want to do. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. not the way we want to handle this. You know, we, there's there's other ways of uh, doing it. And sometimes I'll comment. Sometimes I'll make like two word comments or. He's, and I'll say, are, you know, are you sure this is what you want to do? <laughs> I don't, I'm, I don't see where this is going to benefit. And they'll, you know, they right. might comment back. They might get mad. I mean, I've had people get pissed off at me. Um, I've had people tell me that I should unfriend certain people because of this, that, and the other. And then, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. do it at that particular moment because I thought I was being tolerant. And I ended up a few months later. It was like, well, yeah, I've, I've asked this person a couple times to stop doing that. And it finally got to the point where I wasn't unfriending anybody, but now I'll just unfriend them because there's 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 no reason why I want to have whatever they're commenting to continue because mm-hmm. I don't really uh, it's either unappreciated because it's something really negative, or it's something mm-hmm. you know like go shop at Walmart and it's like, <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm not I'm, I, you know I. I have given you links. I've shown you, shown you different things. It's like you said, you know, let them go, and it's okay. And and I don't even worry about like how many friends I have or you know how many people are commenting on my things. I know people are are reading what I what I post because right. every time I post something, somebody either makes a comment or makes a like. So. And some people don't comment, but they're still watching what I'm posting. Mm-hmm. So I, what I post, I post what I like. And sometimes I post it just because I want to watch it, but I don't have time to watch it when I'm posting it. So I'll post things I haven't even watched yet. You know, mm-hmm. and I probably should, you know, put a misnomer in there and say, I haven't watched this yet, but, you know, if you did give a comment, you know, I could say something, but I usually don't, I don't, I don't interact on Facebook in that respect, but sometimes, like, if somebody sends me a message, or something like that, you know, I'll respond, you know, or I'll offer a link, um, I actually have an alternative energy Facebook, uh, group page, and I'm having mm-hmm. a alternative energy, uh, seminar on December 5th, uh, this year, right. And um, mm-hmm. I have four people from Facebook that are going to be presenters. I have Fernando Vasa. I have Colty, uh, Coltis Negrand, who gave us a link. I'll have uh, John Trello, who I met since I've moved here back to the mountains. Um, he's actually my guitar teacher. And my first lesson, which I didn't have, was spent like an hour and a half talking about uh, anti-hydrofracking, what he's done, uh, you know, and all this stuff. And I, and I was so amazed. He gave me this book. It's like a coffee table book from the Post Carbon Institute. Um, the, apparently, they they made these uh, these books, these beautiful books, and you know, talks about the pillaging of the earth and you know what what we've done with fossil fuels and all this. I mean, he, he gave me this book. I was like, my God. And it's just a wonderful thing. And uh, we're also going to have uh, Liam Chef, who I have uh, somebody from Facebook says, well, you really should interview this guy. And I got him to come on, and I, I knew nothing about him. He's apparently, he's a comedian, he's an author, he's he's really this wonderful, amazing, articulate man who does this wonderful programs and, and just really does a great job doing what we do but on a different level um he's more practical and and he's he calls himself a conspiracy realist so Mm -hmm. um he's he's on a different spectrum than where we're at what we're talking about um i don't know that he doesn't understand what we're saying but he's just more practical 
he thinks, and he has a different way. And in fact, when he's talking about Fukushima, he's encouraging people to move to, you know, southern hemisphere. You know, it's closer to the equator. And I'm like, well, you got to know by now there really isn't anywhere to go. There really isn't any place to go. But he still has a message. He still has an important thing to say because he understands peak oil. He understands, you know, how dependent we are on fossil fuels. Um, he tries to relate that to alternative energies and, and you know, with, with a bit of, we'll say witticism. I don't really want to say sarcasm, but he can but not in a grating way. He's he's more of a comedian. Um, he uses a lot of humor. And, um, you know, tries to say that, you know, we do have these other alternatives, but, you know, like wind. <laughs> but but what about the birds, you know? Like, just the way he says things is funny. So um, I'm going to have these four amazing men. And I wish I had more women, but maybe I'll do this again and I'll be able to showcase women that are going to bring alternative energy possibilities, solutions to uh, this community that's totally immersed in the, the fracking. They're selling their land for pennies on the dollar, really. And, um, and the justification is because they've never been to the ocean and they got a chance, they had some money and they had a chance to go see the ocean. Which I would never, you know, deny that that's, you know, wonderful that you're able to do that. But at what cost, when we make these decisions, you know, what is the, what are the ramifications? What are the long-term problems? Right. You know, is this totally beneficial for the environment, for your family, for the generations of family that you may have, for your community, for the world, you know? And and we've lost that in a sense. We've lost touch with the generational aspect. We've lost touch with I am my brother's keeper, you know. And we've lost touch with what are really important things in life. Is it, it has money really the value of money increased that greatly? Which we all know it has no value. It's only the construct that we believe that it has value. And um, you know, and the and the and the issue of affluence, this, the 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 disease of affluenza, <laughs> you know, thinking that if we had the money, if we had the prestige, if we had the status, would our lives really be better? Would it would it really make a difference? You know, so here we are, you and me, and I'll assume because I do that often. Um, mm -hmm. happy people who mm -hmm. don't have a lot in the ways of, um, of worldly wealth or affluence, but we have happiness and we have joy and mm -hmm. we have, uh, um, a purpose and it's fulfilling and it, and right. it's not even just a hobby. It's like a way of life and it's exactly. just amazing. You know, so it's it's there's so many it's things. Yeah. No, go ahead, continue. I just said it was amazing. No, that that's I don't know what else to say because like I I could get frustrated and I could say, well, you know, that's nice you got to go to the beach, but you know, how are you going to eat that in ten years? You know. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to your land? Are you going to be able to drink your water in 10 years? You know, mm -hmm. And, you know, I actually talked to people who, who were affluent in the community. And, um, you know, I said they're, you know, they're making lawsuits against what these uh, companies are doing because it's not being regulated by the government, blah, blah. And, and they actually come back and say, well, who's to say that these people making the lawsuits even have a case like they're valid or they're truthful or it's real. I mean, they're actually right. saying that. I'm saying, well, they're in court. Did they have to bring some kind of evidence to prove mm -hmm. that they have a case? <laughs> that they're that they're, what they're saying is reasonable. You know that it right. that it has merit. You know, and they're and they're looking at me straight in my face like I'm I got three heads and I'm stupid. 
that how like how could I believe that these court cases that the the people are actually winning against the big uh, fracking uh, system have any you know right or you know whatever to even you know, bring a case like that, like it's, it has no merit, it has no value, and I'm just, I'm like, who am I talking to, <laughs> am, am I talking to aliens, am I talking, you know, and that, and that brings me back, well, where do I have the forgiveness and the love and all the other stuff, and I'm like, and um, it's just, you know, it's just wild, and I, you know, completely sympathize with you or empathize with you, with what you're saying, how difficult it is. But I don't think it's our job to wake people up. I really don't. And 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 I'll say this because I think it's important to say I have my own truth and I've learned that if people want to hear what I have to say, they'll listen. And if they don't, they won't. And I have to discern who those people are because there was a time when I didn't and I just went around and I just told anybody. And I mean, I scared the hell out of a lot of people. You know, telling people, you know, our government's a bunch of Satanists, or, you know. And I had a woman who had a hearing aid, and she literally tried to shut it off. And she turned it the wrong way, and it, it made that awful sound, you know, that they make when they're, it's like a feedback thing. And I, and it, and it took that before I realized, you know, you're scaring people. You're upsetting people. You're really not making people happy. <laughs> you're really not you know doing what you think you're trying to achieve so knowing how to discern who who wants to listen who really wants to listen to what you have to say and platforms like facebook and youtube are are great you know and the way you're doing it go into these different websites or different facebook pages and saying if you if you want to know more or you want to understand things a little clearer you know, why don't you check out my website or my we- my Facebook page? So I think that's that's a more loving and kind <laughs> than I have done in the past. So, and uh, that's what kind of led me in 2009 to do the radio show was because nobody was listening to me. So isn't that weird? That's a crazy way to start a radio show. You're not listening to me, so I'll start a radio show. <laughs> but that's what I did. So. But anyway, so um, we got about ten minutes. No, we got about eight minutes left. Two hours. We did it almost. That's and, it. Um, you know, oh, I was up. I was up for another hour. But okay. you want you want to go another hour? Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I mean, we can do this again. I'm, I'm I'm happy to have you come back. But um, maybe it was, you great, it was great being here. Yeah, give your website and and any other links um, that that are important to you or, you know, give some final last words to the our link listeners. of love. <laughs> yeah. No, um, <laughs> but, you know, if, um, you guys can reach me on Facebook under Paul Wesley or French True Chaser. French True Chaser is primarily my backup account. But um, if you want to get all the good posts that I post daily, it's Paul Wesley, uh, www.frenchtruthchaser.com. And um, YouTube.com slash Prince True Chaser. Like I say, resistance is um, necessary, but love is always key, and it's been really great being on tonight. And I'm like, again, I'm just really humbled and grateful to to be doing what you know we're doing, and what me and you are doing, and everyone else. And you know, self empowerment is is, is 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 key, and we really have to believe in ourselves and believe that we can really change things so thanks a lot for having me and absolutely and that's what you're doing paul and uh thank you so much for for volunteering and thank you so much for agreeing to come and speak with me tonight on alchemical connections you've been an amazing guest yeah and we'll do this again absolutely